everyone, Lisa here from Down to Earth Gardening and happy fall. Today we are creating something from our dried flowers, um, some fall decor. So what we're going to be talking about and making is a witch's broom or besom, but we're actually doing um, a twist on it. It's um, also nicknamed an everlasting bloom broom or a witch's broom with a bouquet. So I can't wait to do this project here because I always look for ways, fun ways to decorate my house and bring my flowers from my garden inside. So I'm using some things from my garden. I'm using some things that I foraged. And then I'm also using some things from a farm stand um, where I purchased some gorgeous status straw flowers and some wheat grass. So I'm really excited to put this all to use. So first let's talk about what we can do with our creation, different ways to use it. Then we'll get into a little bit of fun witch's lore and history of the witch's broom. And then we're actually going to get down to it and make one together. So what you can do with your witch's broom is Number one, if you are looking for a costume and you're thinking about being a witch, it would be a really great addition to your Halloween costume. So that would be really fun to add this in the mix. Uh, I know a lot of us like to make our own costumes. Two, you can use this to decorate for fall. So you could use it inside or outside. Um, you can hang it over your door. You can put it on your hearth. So I will say that if you're using it inside, it's going to last for years. And if you're using it outside, you might want to be a little mindful of what you're using for materials. And you may only get one year out of it, but we can always make another one. So um, I want to talk a little bit about lore because it's kind of fun, you know, to cover some fun facts about it. So, of course, we all think of a witch's broom as a the main mode of transportation for the witch. <laughs> so we just kind of envision them flying through the air on a broom. But there is some lore around them that they will keep negative energy from your house, add protection to your house spiritually, and you're kind of thinking of it as sweeping the negative energy away. So they can be used for cleansing, spiritual cleansing rituals, or to keep negative energy away. Um, so that's kind of fun, just a little fun fact and some aside. So anything that can bring good fortune, good fortune to me, I'm all about. So, hey, why not? <laughs> so we're definitely not using these brooms for cleaning and um, I'm probably gonna use mine either in a container outside and I'm gonna show you outside my front door or on my hearth inside. So um, a little bit more about that at the end. But what you need for your project. So I was talking a little bit about foraging and the things that I have foraged for this project are my broom handles, which are some nice branches. So I've just found, this here is a birch. I love to find free treasures to use in my projects. Um, and this is a hardwood branch. So you can strip the bark off or not, whatever you prefer it to look like. And I have a shorter one here too. But if you don't have time to go out and hunt for some branches, you could use a um, bamboo stick. If you have a lot of garden stakes around, you can transform it into your handle or even a dowel. So you can be creative with it. I also think a piece of driftwood would be fabulous. So the only thing I wouldn't really use is a uh, pine branch or anything pitchy that's going to be sticky on your hands. So that's um, fun. That can be fun for the whole family in hunting that down. So then the next thing that you're gonna need is a mix of dried flowers. And what I have here is some flowers that you may recognize from a recent video. So we're going to be using some of those on what I'm drawing this year. 
and my status, whatnot. But you also want some material for your broom base. So the dried flowers and seed pods and whatnot are more of an embellishment, but traditionally these were made with branches or even um, grasses. You can use some plumes from grasses. But I've picked up some broom corn for my base. So this here I purchased, and I will throw up the link in the description in case you're interested. Um, I ordered a pound of this, and this is only about half of the pound, and it is 20 inches long because I wanted to give myself some versatility um, depending on how long my broom was. So if I use the shorter one, I can cut this down a little bit. But you can see how this wheat grass would also make a really fun base for my broom. And then you're also going to need some kind of wire. So it could be um, twine. I have some wax coated twine here. I have my raffia covered wire. So whatever you have on hand for wire is fine. And then of course your wire cutters, um, some scissors or pruners to cut down your dried flowers, and then some ribbon for embellishing little pieces of material, um, different colors, textures are going to be a lot of fun. Okay, so let's get down to it. Okay, here we go. So I've selected my stick, which is about three feet. I would say if you're looking for something, you're foraging, nothing bigger than five feet. Three, three feet is actually a perfect size, but think about where you're putting it because if you had a smaller space, this would, this would also be fun. So we're gonna start with our stick here and this is going to be where I'm putting the bristles and I'm going to be making a bouquet starting with my broom corn and then embellishing it and then about eight inches up I'm going to just be wrapping this around the twig and securing it and then I'm going to show you how I'm going to decorate it at the end. So like I said we're making a bouquet and I'm using this as my base. So I'm really just going to have a little fun with this. And I think I am going to add some of my wheatgrass, some different lengths here, and then I'm going to cut it at the end when I've made my final decision here. Love this status. It's so vibrant. <clears throat> and you all know how much I love purple. So I've got to use some of that. And then these are actually some dried flowers from last year. I have some artemisia. I like the gray foliage here. And I have some amaranth. It's really coming together here. Is there such a thing as too many dried flowers? <laughs> no. of gold with the tansy. That's something new that I dried this year. And then the marigolds are kind of short. So the next batch that I dried, they're a little bit longer. So I think I may have to add them in after. Do some pods here. What else do we have? Some celosia here, also from last year. Okay, so this is what I have so far. 
and it is more of a one-sided arrangement. We're only going to be looking at one side of it. So I'm just focusing on this front here. So this is if I have the bristles upright. I'm just testing it out. Or if I hang it with the bristles pointing down. So we do have more than one chance with the bouquet here because we can tweak it once we have it on here and add some more with the glue gun, which I think will be great to add some of the more delicate or the shorter flowers and really embellish it. But I really am loving how it's looking. I think the only thing I'm thinking is I would like a little more white in here and maybe a little more purple. <laughs> so let's see. I'm just thinking about different colors and textures. I love also going to farm stands and just supporting local businesses and farmers. You can find some pretty great stuff. All right, I'm pulling the some of the broom corn up a little bit. So I'm kind of making a little more of a fan. I want to be able to see a peak of everything that I have in the mix here. That's a little shorter, so I may put that on after. Mm. This was the uh, Globe Amaranth that I just dried, and it is so vibrant. I love being able to do these projects outside so I can just not worry about making a big mess. Okay. Okay, so I'm just about ready to um, adhere this to the broomstick, but I want to trim the ends up a little bit and I can tweak it a little bit more once it's on there. But I just, I don't need all of this excess, so it's a good time to trim it up a little bit. I've just got my pruners here. So that's actually pretty good. We can fine tune it once it's on here. Okay, so I'm gonna use this wire um, wrapped in raffia. I really like this stuff because it has such a natural look to it. But you can also, just to have some little added insurance, um, bring out your glue gun and put some hot glue around the base here where you're going to put your bouquet or your, your bristles on. So just a little bit of extra insurance and be very careful because you all know these glue guns get really hot. They really heat up. So just a little bit, and then we're going to go for it here. Okay, so I am trying to wrap it around the back a little bit. Okay. So the raffia is so natural looking that it blended right into everything else. So I'm just going to try to Put that around here. So whatever doesn't catch in the wire, uh, I'm gonna also just glue in and secure it later. Okay, so gotta try to wrap this as tight as you 
possibly can really try to secure it. So I'm going to tie it off before I keep wrapping and then I'm going to go around a few more times. So I am going to use some other materials along with this to secure it and also for embellishment. Okay, this is what we have so far, and we are going to continue securing it, but while we have it a little loose here, it's a really good time to play around with your bouquet. And so you can move things around. Um, I'd like to see a little more of this wheat grass here and then this isn't quite long enough so i'm going to just add some glue and then same thing with the marigolds that i have too so i really want to use a little bit of the orange i want to fan it out a little bit so you're getting a peek of everything here all right, I'm going to leave these in a little bouquet because they are shorter and they're tied with raffia, which is just going to blend right in. So you can see here how you can really play around with texture and color. It's not quite long enough, so it's going to need a little bit of glue. So you can see how I'm just playing around with it a little bit before I'm securing it, just to make sure. Once you get that glue on there, it's really tough to change your mind. Okay. So now if you have some twine or wax twine is great, we're really going to be securing this here. Just wrap it around and pull it as tight as you can. So this is what we have here. And what I'm going to do now that it's secured is I'm just going to even out the ends here. So we'll see if I can do it with some scissors. I think I need to even it out a little bit more. Okay, now some more fun. So now if you have any material or lace or some tool or something, um, it's a good time to get that out and just kind of play around and see how you can embellish it. I like the glitter. I like the black. And I also like the lavender. So, but this is um, just a little bit of lace, some crocheted lace. You can see how if you had some material, it could also work and look really pretty. So I think I'm going to do a little bit of these, both.
and here we have it. This is the creation that I made um, basically out of my dried flowers, a twig that I foraged for, and some ribbon, and just a couple little tools. But I had a lot of fun today making this everlasting bloom broom with you or witch's broom. But uh, hang on and I'm going to show you where I'm going to put it and how I'm going to decorate for fall and Halloween with it. But again, thank you for joining me today. I have a lot of fun doing these videos. And if you like this one, please go ahead and tap like and hit subscribe for some future gardening fun with us. Okay, so this is one of my ideas for where I'm going to display my broom. And also, um, traditionally, lore says that bristles pointing up protects your home, wards off negative energy, and protects the people that live here. So why not? <laughs> and plus, I think this is a fun spot. So bristles up, and I think this is a great place just to combine it with my fall container here. I can just secure it in here. 